everyone, my name is Cheryl and this is my Happy Handcraft Studio. I love fall. I think I've said that before, how much I love fall. I think it's from teaching for so many years that fall is like the new year. And I have all kinds of energy and enthusiasm for getting things done and for starting new things. And so today I'm going to talk about some finishes and fully finished objects that I have both in stitching and in quilting. I have a few purchases and um, some plans for both stitching and quilting. And then at the end, I've read two great books in the last couple of weeks that I'd like to share with you. So finishes at this this was a mega finishing time for me. So the first thing that I finished was the Seasons of the Heart Spring. And this was by uh, Janine McGowan of The Blue Flower. So that one is all done now and I'm just looking for a frame for this one. And the next one was one of my Mania Red Sampler starts. And this is called Letters and Leaves by La Di Da. Uh, it's an unknown linen, unknown thread. And I did add some Canadian maple leaves so that uh, my samplers would have sort of a Canadian flair to them. So, the next finishes are fully finished objects. Now some have been around for quite a while. If you followed me in the past, you'll know that I was doing this memorial piece for my mother. This is Winter by um, Lena Etsy Cross Stitch. Lena Cross Stitch on Etsy. And the colors were all chosen as favorites of my mother. So I love having that done. It took a long time to get it framed because I had difficulty finding a frame to fit the fabric piece that I had. And so I've been looking for quite a while and then last week I found a piece of art and you can see it looked like this inside. I just turned it around. It was a gold frame and so I used just a pewter color acrylic to glaze it. I basically just did a light coat on and it gives it its silver um, finish. So really thrilled with that and I'm very excited to finally be able to hang it. Uh, the next object that I fully finished was this one, Even Busy Bees. Stop and smell roses. This was from Punch Needle and Primitive Stitching Magazine. And this frame, um, so the last frame was Goodwill and that was 250 for the frame. And then this frame, again Goodwill, and about $5 had never been used. And so I have that in there. Now this one, I have finished the back with a piece of and I'll do that with the other one as well. So I like how this one has turned out. And then I had two of my red samplers finished. This one is called Live Simply. And this is Hands to Work Designs. This is DMC 498 on a white 18 count Charles craft. And I added this uh, bottom part, the True North Strong and Free, that's part of our national anthem in Canada. And now this frame was originally one of those oak, honey oak frames. And again, I gave it a glaze of the silver pewter color. And then my final fully finished object was this scissor sampler. 
And as well, this is another charity shop frame. And to make it fit the space better, I added a little bit of ribbon. And I'm happy with that one too. So now I have to actually look at starting a sample wall because I am getting several samplers and there's more to come. So I did great in finishing and fully finishing my items. So another one that I work on daily is my temperature chart, Meteo 2021. And as you can see, we're getting into just the greens and the yellows. The orange days with 25 and above are, are gone, but we're having a beautiful fall. You know, blue sky, the trees are changing. It's wonderful. Now we don't have the same kind of fall colors as you have in some of the northeastern states. Ours are mainly just yellows with a few oranges, a touch of red if they're um, some of the special trees planted around homes. But it's all beautiful. Happy that, that it's as pretty as it is. It's blue sky with the yellow. It makes all the difference. All right, so probably one of the main pieces I worked on was my 100 owls. And this is by Owl Forest Embroidery. And so I have this owl here all complete now. I'm loving that. This one was done on Pearl Gray Lugana 32 count. So there's a real hope that I will get this finished by October, I would say, if I continue to work on it. It's a good fall piece, so I'm really happy to be working on it. And then the other monthly piece that I work on is Talavera. Now Talavera is the Linens and Threads 2021 um, Mystery Stitch Along. And this is on a 28 count Monaco and I've chosen, uh, I think, four or five colors that I just use consistently throughout. And I'm loving it. Like, it's, it's you know, I don't want to say I have a favorite, but it is definitely a pleasure to work on and to look at. So, Sampler September. Last time I talked to you, I said I was going to start my own sampler based on where I was at as about a 10 year old. And so I, I did start, and you know, there's, there, I think there's gonna be a few hiccups, but I, I am more or less happy with what I've done so far. So I did start with the corner, and then I went on to the first alphabet. And I'm thinking that I may be taking this out and moving it closer. This is a really slubby linen, so it was really hard to kind of guess the count. So I just kind of guessed about where I wanted it to begin in the corner, but I can see where I'm going to have to, to move it over. And so for the alphabet, you see there are some letters that are different colors, and these are the letters of my family members. So I am the C. My birthstone is diamond. This is my mother. Her birthstone was sapphire. My father, amethyst. And my brother, garnet. And so it's a start. I, I am going to continue to go down the center. And then later on, I'll decide if I move the corners in and then add borders across the top, or if I leave the corners where they're at and put motif or something in here to balance it out. But yeah, it's fun. It's fun to work and just kind of stitch as you go. You, you know, there 
there's there's a plan but it's not really a firm plan and because I had so many finishes I felt great about a new start and my new start because um, in Canada we have our Thanksgiving before Halloween so I'm doing my Thanksgiving stitching first and the pattern I found is called thankful not thankful thankful and the reason it's called thankful is um, Stone Street Stitchworks planned it using wool instead of a, like a DMC uh, embroidery floss. But I am really loving, loving it so far. I love how the stitches are making different kinds of textures on the piece. I think it's going to be great. I started this the first day of fall to uh, get into my my fall stitching. So, plans for stitching. I'm going to get this uh, turkey finished first. I really want that done and all finished uh, for our Thanksgiving season. I'm going to continue to work on the owl forest and I have a couple of red samplers still to finish. I think I have two. Two left to, do, to go. So I really want to have those done as well. Because what I'm hoping is when I get my next red sampler done, I'm going to start a Halloween piece. Just a small ornament one, just to build up my holiday uh, pieces. So I'll talk about my stash abundance. So uh, the first thing that I purchased was the Just Cross Stitch Halloween magazine. And I don't know if, if you're like me, but I put post-it notes on my favorites and then I number them. And I checked my numbering before I started this video and it had already changed. So this will be my first choice. I really love that little skull, Day of the Dead skull. Uh, and it's by Linda Medina of Medina Originals. Only thing I'm going to have to probably dye a piece of orange. So I'm gonna pick up some Ritz orange dye today so that I can start that one right away. I think that'll be, that'll be fun. And it also has some beading in it, which I think will really be fun. Fun to add that to it. So, our charity, the Ujama Grandmas, had a huge garage sale last weekend. And we were really well supported. We were really well supported by the all kinds of home sewers and knitters who donated fabric and yarn. And the main reason for a garage sale is that we only have limited space to store all of the donations that people are always so graciously giving us. And so we had a garage sale. And I'll show a few pictures. You can see how well attended the garage sale was. People loved the yarn. And there were all all types of yarn there. People were taking it out by the bag full. It was great. And then we had a lot of quilt fabric, quilt cottons, and people really loved the small one dollar rolls we made. Anything less than a meter, we sold for a dollar, and it was rolled up. People filled their bags with them. You know, perfect for mask making small seasonal crafts and of course quilt making because that's that's my favorite kind of quilt is a scrappy quilt so I did pick up a couple of things now first thing I picked up one of those rolls of fabric and it really um, got 
caught my notice because it is those Halloween colors in a very modern um, print. And this one was called Cats, Bats, and Vats, designs by Lear for Clothworks. So it is actually a Halloween print. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, whether I'll use it to back some of my Halloween pieces. It is just a nice kind of fall fabric. I might cover a cushion with it. But for a dollar, you can sit on it and wait to, wait to decide. So I'm happy with that one. And we often get quilt rulers. And you know, quilt rulers are really expensive. Now this one I picked up, this is for like English paper piecing uh, or um, there's another kind of piecing where you want to add a quarter inch. So this has a little bit of a lip on it so you can easily take um, when you're trimming your pieces, just to put the fabric up and trim the quarter inch. So it's uh, the add a quarter uh, with its specifically designed lift automatically adds the customary one quarter seam allowance to any angle and provides a straight edge for your rotary cutter. So I thought that was a great buy. I'm sure that's a, a ruler I'll use. And then I found this lovely little kit. It is just, just precious and perfect for uh, a needle worker. This one is called Needlework Fairy. And it has everything in it. The fabric, floss, button, beads. So I was, I was thrilled to find that. I'm not sure when I'm going to start it, but it's a Jim Shore by Mill Hill kit. So I have that to look forward to. Maybe a New Year start. I'm not sure. But I'm just, as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking um, my mom's birthday is September 27th. Might be a nice memory piece to do for her. She would have loved the colors and she was the one that introduced me to needlework. So maybe she's my needlework fairy, needlework angel. I think that would be a great start. Okay, so something else. As we were preparing for the garage sale, we often find pieces that are partially completed. And if we think it's something that we can actually sell at our Bags, Babies, and Beyond charity event, it's coming up in October, we take them home and finish them, and then we'll sell them. So this is a great table runner. So the top is all done. The hard work is done. And there was a fabric at the sale that would be a great backing. So. My quilt, main quilt plan is to try to get this ready for the October sale. Now, if you are in the Southeast Alberta, uh, Southern Alberta area, and Calgary is a nice little road trip for you, the sale is uh, promoted on our Ujama Grandma website and it gives you information on how to book your free tickets. Now we do have a ticketing system because Alberta is drowning in its fourth wave. Just, just, there's not much you can say except stay safe, stay masked, be well. Um, so we are following all of our local mandated health requirements. So it'll be a safe sale in that we are really limiting the numbers of people that come into our event. Um, before COVID, we would have lineups that 
people would line up for two hours to come in. Well, now we don't have that, which is, which in a way is a really good thing. You um, get online, you get your ticket, and basically you're guaranteed a lovely customer experience because you'll be waited on hand and foot by all of our lovely salespeople. And we have great product. We have lots of product for you to to buy for yourself as gifts for family and friends. So we have bags, we have um, home decor, we have fabulous knit accessories from your head to your toe, we cover it all. We have pottery this year, jewelry, we have a whole children's area that are both wearables and non-wearables, blankets, toys, etc. And a seasonal area, so for Christmas and fall decorations, winter, we're getting quite a gnome section. So um, yeah, if, if you can come, that would be great. And I'll be sure yeah, later in October to give you a sneak peek at all of our wonderful um, product that we had out. Okay, so for quilting, I did finish a quilt, and the quilt that I uh, fully finished was the Social Lights quilt. So this was through Fat Quarter Shop. It was a block a week, and I sold it all together. And then I also did what Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilting calls an after quilt. So I basically took all the pieces and a few orphan blocks from my stash and um, made the backing for the quilt. I love doing that. I love uh, having the back of the quilt be as interesting as the front. So, quilting. So quilting right now, we've just, I've had two guild meetings. I'm in two different guilds and um, for one of them we're doing a mystery quilt and so I am searching out fabric today for that so that I'll be all ready to start beginning of October. And um, yeah, I've, I've registered for a couple of quilt workshops, one on machine quilting and one on um, Dresden plate design. So, I have lots to look forward to there. So finally, before I leave, two great books that I've read recently. So the first one that I read was called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And this was by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now she also wrote Daisy and the Six. And this was really, really an interesting book, kind of based on old Hollywood. Um, the author says she kind of based her characters on Elizabeth Taylor, Ava Gardner, Tab Hunter, Rita Hayworth. And it tells um, about Hel Hevel Evelyn Hugo. It tells about her life through her marriages to her different husbands and why she married them true love of her life was. Really, really an interesting, interesting book. Just like in the movies, nothing is what it really seems. And then the one I just finished was called The Personal Librarian. And this one is by Maria Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. Now, I've read other Maria Benedict books. The one I, another one I really liked was The Other Einstein which talked about the wife of Albert Einstein and how she was a physicist and may have actually played a pivotal role in a lot of his, um, his discoveries. I think more and more we find out that a lot of history is actually herstory. There were a lot of great women behind these men that were partners and um, never really got their share of 
the glory. So the personal librarian is based on the true story of Belle de Costa Green, who was the personal librarian of J.P. Morgan. And J.P. Morgan collected rare manuscripts and art and decided he was going to have his own private library. So the Pier Point Morgan Library, which is now was given to the public so it's a library in New York that has all these fabulous manuscripts um, and Belle de Costa Green was hired by J.P. Morgan to organize his collection and she became not only the organizer but the facilitator to find some of the greatest works of art around the world and in the early 1900s traveled the world purchasing um, these items. She was one of the few women that had that kind of a role in the art world and um, the secret which you find out right away that made her life so difficult was that she was a woman of color who was passing as white. And I use those words as words that are used in the book. Her father, Richard Greener, was the first black graduate of Harvard and became um, a civil rights activist black rights activist in the 1900s. But you'll find out if you read the book that, you know, Belle and her father really live apart uh, for most of her life and the reasons behind that. Um, really a, a great book and written by two authors to really capture the voice of Belle Costa Green. So, I recommend that one as well. All right, there's always so much to do, and today there's a beautiful day to go out and enjoy. So, I wish you great stitching and quilting and reading, and if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, go out and enjoy fall. Southern Hemisphere, spring, yay, it's all good. All right, thanks so much. See you soon.